In this video, I'm going to show you how to perform the posterior impingement sign for internal impingement of the shoulder. Get our very own assessment ebook and mobile app. Links are in the video description. Hi and welcome back to PhysioTutors. A very common pathology in overhead throwing athletes is posterior shoulder pain resulting from internal impingement. Internal impingement is a term used to describe a constellation of symptoms which result from the greater tuberosity of the humerus and the articular surface of the rotator cuff abutting the posterior superior glenoid when the shoulder is in an abducted and externally rotated position. The pathophysiology in symptomatic internal impingement is multifactorial involving physiologic shoulder remodeling, posterior capsule contracture and scapular dyskinesis. Meister et al. from the year 2004 have evaluated the internal impingement test and have found a sensitivity of 76% and a specificity of 85%. Although the diagnostic accuracy is moderate, the study contains several methodological flaws. For this reason, we give this test a weak clinical value until further diagnostic studies have been carried out. To conduct the test, have the patient in supine position. Then bring the patient's shoulder into 90 to 110 degrees of abduction, 10 to 15 degrees of extension and maximal external rotation. The test is positive if the patient's complaints of deep posterior pain are reproduced. A positive test was correlated with undersurface tearing of the rotator cuff and or posterior labrum in athletes with gradual onset of posterior shoulder pain during overhand athletics. Be aware that the tests that were designed for the formerly called external impingement group can create a false positive outcome in case of internal impingement as well. Leschinger et al. in the year 2017 report that mechanical contact of the supraspinatus with the posterior superior glenoid was present during the near test, while the Hawkins-Kennedy test might be provocative in case of antero superior internal impingement as well. Alright, this was our video on the posterior impingement sign. If you want to learn how to assess for a good, which can be a predisposing factor in posterior impingement, click on the video right next to me. If you are interested in more content from us, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, or check out our website physiotutors.com. This was Kai for Physiotutors. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.